Okay, today we're going to be working on making a six inch coil cylinder and I'm going to go over um, how to do that. A lot of these things you know already. We're going to be starting with a slab. You know how to roll out a slab. It should be about a quarter of an inch thick and you can use these sticks as a guide to rest your rolling pin on to make sure you get a nice even slab. And we're going to start out by um, using a template to cut the bottom for our pot. Again, it has to be six inches tall. And remember, as usual, when you're cutting, you want to hold your blade perpendicular to your template to make sure you get nice straight edges. If you hold it at an angle, you'll have a beveled edge and you won't have such a neat piece of work and it just causes you to have more work in the end when you're trying to perfect your pot and get everything the way you want it. So, let me get rid of that. And now you have the beginnings for your pot. And everything is going to be made out of coils and you're going to have to be creative with your coils. In the six inches from the top to the bottom, you'll have to have three different patterns and we're going to be focusing on the principle of design rhythm. So rhythms usually repeat themselves, so you should have some sort of rhythm going with your designs that you're coming up with with your pot. On my mat, I've rolled some coils trying to work on um, the design that I think that I'm going to put on my pot and I put them out here so you could see how I'm going to start to create that rhythm with my um, with my design for my coiled pot. So when I start on my bottom I'm going to start with two coils and then I have these dots and like these S coils that I've made and then I put dots in between there and I'm going to put two more coils and then I made like these rainbows, I guess you could call them that, and put them on top. And then I would start again and repeat and have a rhythm going with my pattern. So that's the principle of design that we are focusing on. And as usual, always craftsmanship. So when you build your pot, you're going to need to um, flip and score. And we know that already. So you're just going to start on the bottom and you're going to start building your design up and I've already decided that um, my pot is going to start out with two straight coils and then I'll start my pattern and so just like always we're going to put some slip on to put everything together. And my coil broke because it's getting a little dry, but I'm just going to keep it going. On this assignment, you do not want to blend the outside. You want to see the design that you created with your coils. So you're going to be blending and smoothing on the inside, and that should be well blended. And you shouldn't wait to the end or put like 10 coils on there or 10 layers and then try and smooth everything out. You should smooth them out and blend them together as you add one or two coils so you can reach in there and do a nice job. You're going to be able to see inside your pot so you want it to be nice. So you want to make sure that you pinch your clay down. I'll do this side so you can see. And then I'm just going to take some water and smooth out my seam. And I'm just going to do this little bit for demonstration purposes, but just so you get the idea that everything on the inside is going to be all nice and neat. And on the outside, I'm going to see my coil. So I'm just going to attach one more coil so you can see what I mean. My slip is a little thick. It should really be like yogurt. I'm 
move the layer down. And when I put two straight quills on top like this, I don't want the seam where I started and ended to be in the same place. You want to shift it over a little bit to not have a weak area in your pot. So those seams should kind of go around your pot evenly instead of having all seams in one place. I'm just going to take that off a little bit because it's not the same thickness. And then I would put that on there. And as you're building, you want to make sure that you're building nice and straight, that one coil isn't getting bigger and going out, unless that's something that you're trying to do. But if you're making a cylinder, it should be built up nice and straight. And then again, I'm going to blend those seams. And I would keep going. For attaching these, I would look and see where they're going to be touching and where my little dots are touching. Maybe I would even attach these first, put them in there like that, slip and score of course, and then I would slip and score this all together. And then I would blend the insides together and smooth everything out so it's nice and pretty. And then my next layer would be two coils and then I would have my rainbow thing on top and then I would keep going with my pattern until my cylinder is six inches tall. After my cylinder is six inches tall it's going to have to have a lid and your lid is going to be the same diameter as your base so I use the same temp template to cut out the lid as I did the base and I'm just going to pull this off because I want you to see that my lid is going to have to fit on the top of my cylinder and if I did a good job everything should be pretty much the same size and it's pretty close and then I'm going to take a coil and I'm going to attach this on the inside of my lid and that's called a flange and the reason why you have to attach to this on the inside of your lid is because you don't want the lid to slide off every time you touch the jar so you have to have something to lock it in place. And I'm just going to get my clay a little wet. And I'm going to line my lid back up on here. And then I'm just going to lift it up again. And I'll have a little bit of water on here showing me where my lid fit on there. And I want to just make sure that I made a coil that will fit on the inside of that. Actually, my coil is a little bit small, so I would want to make it a little bigger because remember that clay does shrink. So I would attach a little bit more clay inside of there. And again, you want it to be nice and round. And you want to make sure that it fits inside. And I would um, really roll a new coil if I was actually building this but I'm just kind of going to stick it on there and make sure that everything lines up and fits together and if it does then I know that works and I'm going to try and lift all that up together to make sure and it's breaking to make sure that my coil fits or my lid fits my cylinder and then you're going to attach all the pieces you're going to blend the seams together after you slip and score and smooth everything out. And you know how to do all of these things already. This is secondary knowledge for you now. So I'm not spending a lot of time on that. I just want you to know that you have to have a lid. It has to have this flange piece stuck on here where you're going to blend the seams on the inside and on the outside of the flange and make everything nice and neat. You're going to smooth out your edges with your finger and you're going to fit that back on top of there. Make sure everything fits after you put it together. When you're all done and you're ready to attach your lid, you're going to put wax resist in between the two pieces. So when it shrinks, everything shrinks at the same rate and your lid will still fit 
your cylinder when you're all done. On the top, you can attach a handle and um, that will be up to your discretion. It should not just be a little ball of clay. You are in art class, so you should be creative and come up with something unique or something that matches your pattern, the rhythm that you have going on with your pot already.